Hey, Airheads. Today's episode of Aficionado's Internet Radio is brought to you by Audible.com. If you sign up today, you can get a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial if you go to audibletrial.com slash aficionados chris. With over 150,000 titles for your iPhone, Kindle, MP3 player, and my personal preference, the Android, you can choose from many titles out there. My personal recommendation would be Attempting Normal by Mark Marin. Once again, if you want a free audiobook and a free 30-day trial at audible.com, go to audibletrial.com. Com slash aficionados Chris. The link will be in the description. Now, let's start the show. Hey, Airheads. Aficionados Chris here. You're listening to Aficionados Internet Radio. Aficionados Chris. Hey, everybody. Aficionados Chris here. And today, I have a very special guest on Aficionados Internet Radio who is uh, best known in the voice acting industry, specifically in the uh, anime demographic for shows like Bleach, Naruto, Eureka 7. Uh, but the one we're going to be talking about today is that she is the current voice of one of the most iconic anime characters of all time from, equally so, one of the most iconic anime series of all time, Sailor Moon. And to coincide with the Blu-ray release that I have released so far, uh, we have Miss Stephanie Shea on the show. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Uh, How is everybody? I think everyone (laughs) is good. Hearing uh, of of the new uh, incarnation of a a well-established iconic character, both in the Western and uh, Japanese demographic. That must be incredible. Uh, Yeah, it's a little overwhelming. Sometimes (laughs) I still don't believe that it's true. Well, believe it. (laughs) It was fantastic. I actually reviewed the Blu-ray recently. Uh, picture quality had some problems, but I really enjoyed the new dub because I actually hadn't seen the show since I was about six or seven when when it was, I think it was re-airing in America because I was born in the 90s. Uh, so it, it was really, I actually didn't even know it was a new dub. So it was great to hear the show again with brand new voices who I think fit the characters very, very well. Oh, okay. But it didn't, I mean, like, it must have, it seemed different. Oh, you just don't remember it, is what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, it's been so long that I didn't even know it was a new dub. And I, someone had to tell me, it's like, oh, that's a new dub. Oh, okay. Could have fooled oh, me. Oh, you I just thought you were watching the original dub. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I think... No, uh, the original dub is really different. I, I would assume, but, like, you know, as my memory serves, I really don't remember what it used to sound like. So yeah. I had to listen to everyone else who's more... Uh, knowledge on on sailor moon this and that to tell me it's a new dub (laughs) so you fooled me from six years ago but uh the first thing that i think a lot of people because i've interviewed voice actors before or people who uh are are learning in, in the industry uh first things first what got you interested in pursuing a career in voice acting um you know i don't think i was ever trying to pursue a career in vo per se um I just wanted to be an actress, and um, when I was in college, I was introduced to anime, and I really liked it, except for I really didn't enjoy the dubs at the time, and um, so I ended up thinking to myself, well, you know, I, I don't know if I'm any good as an actress, but I feel like the bar is pretty low. So I think I could at least do that level of performance and hopefully I would be even better. So that's kind of how it's kind of, it's kind of messed up, but, um, that, that's, that's the truth. Basically I had very low self-esteem and I didn't think dubs were very good. And so I thought I could at least, I should at least be able to make it a mess in an, in an anime dub. <laughs> so you're um, basically saying because the dubs you saw weren't that great must be very easy to get into. Yeah, I guess kind <laughs> of. like I don't even know if it was so much get into, but I felt like I could at least do that. And 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 I wasn't trying. I didn't aspire to be mediocre. Not at all. I <laughs> well, nobody be, does. You know, because I, I could see how maybe someone would interpret it that way. I wanted to be... I wanted to make the quality of dubbing or, you know, voice acting for anime better, definitely. But I think at the time I just graduated from college and I didn't study acting in college, um, even though I wanted to pursue acting. Um, so I, I just didn't have any confidence in my ability or myself. So I think the, the bar being set low, um, was a way was just gave me enough confidence to even pursue it is really what it is. And 
and I feel bad saying that because I have peers who worked on shows at that time. Um, but I also think that part of it too is like the industry is really different now than it was then. Um, and I had no concept of what it took to uh, produce a voiceover, English language voiceover uh, at that time. So it's very easy to sit back and say, well, you guys suck, you know. <laughs> but then when you realize that like, oh, they have to act to the lip flaps, you know what I mean? Like, and, and even like, you know, I'm friends with Mark Handler and he worked on like Voltron and other things like that. And he, you know, back during that time, like Robotech and Voltron time, he was saying that recording was analog and not digital. And, you know, they, they were chasing tape. And so anytime they did a new take of a line, they were rewriting over the old take. So as a director, you would really had to think, well, is the actor going to get better? Or is it going to well, worse or the same? You know what I mean? You really had to think, is this the best take, you know, or am I risk losing this take for something else? It could be crappier. And, um, and they didn't, they couldn't shift things around in terms of sync and timing. I think they were like timing things with stopwatches. So, uh, it, I mean, I don't really fault people who worked in dubbing, you know, at that time, you know, for it, for the quality being worse, because I think that what this, the, the situation that they're working under was, was much more difficult, you know? Well, it certainly is a, a, a different nowadays because I've heard different stories from like Bo Billingsley and Steve Blum on how they got into uh, the voice dubbing thing. In fact, Steve Blum's story was that he was just in a, a mail room doing funny voices and uh, he got he got a job later on on Cowboy Bebop. So it, everyone has a different story, I suppose. Yeah, and he, he started like really like much earlier than I did. Yeah. So um, and thank God that they cast him in Cowboy Bebop because what a talent. Do you know uh, what I mean? Well, I mean you... I, I, yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. I love that show. I, lo I worked with him on my review. I had him, we had this gag where uh, I was smoking a, a fake uh, cigarette and after inhaling some cigarette smoke, I started to sound like him just to sort of play off his really bassy, throaty voice that he has. It's just wonderful to listen to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the uh, the other thing that uh, is very because uh, there's there's quite a lot of them out there, but uh, every now and then I do find one is that uh, much like uh, some anime uh, voice actors or dubbers or whatever you want to call them, you've also uh, done some voice direction for some projects, uh, which begs the question for a lot of people because some voice actors can also double doing uh, voice direction. Like Charlie Adler is a name that comes to mind for me. Uh, what do you think is the big difference between uh, dubbing an anime? versus directing a dub for an anime or a film or even a video game in some cases? Um, well, you're responsible for everyone's performances and not just your own. Like as an actor, you often have an opinion and you make choices in terms of the performance, but ultimately it's not up to you. I mean, there are plenty of times as an actor where I just have to bite my tongue because that's not how I would choose for the scene to go. But you have to do what you're told, you know. Um, as a director, you get to craft everything and make the scene come together. Um, so you are overseeing all, all sorts of uh, performances. And, and so um, it, in that essence, it's different. And I think that, you know, I think it helps to be an actor and, and a director. But or at least understand what the actors are going through. I think that's what helps a director. So if you are a director and you're not an actor, I, I do think it behooves you to take an acting class so you can understand the actor's point of view. Because really ultimately it's about communication and actors are really, really insecure. So being clear in your communication and being very supportive, I think is very, is, is uh, very important as a director. I would think the two would go hand in hand nicely because I would think to be a really good director, you have to at least have some idea of how to act because you have to direct someone to give a performance and you probably have to know how to give a similar performance if you're going to communicate well, it to your actors. 
I think that's the difference between like directing a scene in a like directing a play or a film versus directing voiceover. Voiceover is all immediate. So like the director is really telling you what choices to make. Like does the character is the character sad, happy, you know, what's the mo- motivation in these scenes and then also overseeing technical things like it needs to be longer or louder or Yeah, the gist of it is like as as a voice director you don't really get to you know, nurture the actor and show them how to act or how to get there. You kind of just say, like, do this, and then they, you have to do it. So, I think it takes a lot to do that, but uh, it's good that someone like you has learned to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now with the big thing uh, that everyone is dying to know, uh, considering, like I said earlier, that it's a brand new dub, uh, and I'm, everyone would love to know, how did you end up getting the role of Sailor Moon for the new Viz Media dub? Um, I auditioned like everyone else. It's kind of boring. (laughs) Um, The auditions came out. It's pretty funny because, I mean, it was very clear that it was Sailor Moon um, because of the characters' names and the text. Um, Even though they didn't say it was Sailor Moon, but you get the auditions and you're looking at it and you're like, dude, this is Sailor Moon. And it was confusing because at that time I had heard a rumor that Funimation had the rights to Sailor Moon. So I was like, why am I getting, why am I getting auditions from Studiopolis? I thought Funimation had this. Um, but I was like, all right, whatever. And I read for all of the girl parts. Um, I really didn't think that um, I, I mean, I, I was hoping that I would be on the show, but I, I didn't really think that, oh yeah, I, you know, definitely this is what I'm going to, you know, I I don't know. I I didn't have any expectations. And then um, I went to Hawaii for my birthday. And while I was there, Jamie sent me an email said, are you available to come in tomorrow for a callback? And I was like, um, I'm in Hawaii. Um, and, uh, and then I said, can I do it remotely? Can you give me notes? Can, can I just, you know, email it in? And he was like, uh, you know what? Never mind. And I was like, oh, no, maybe I just screwed that up. Um, But then the day that I was leaving, he sent me an email saying, you've been cast, but you have to agree to be be available for Anime Expo promotion. You have to sign this NDA. You can't tell anybody, all this stuff. And... um, and so I, you know, I was really excited and I signed it. And, but I didn't know who I'd been cast as. I actually didn't know who I'd been cast as until the day before my first session. Um, and I assumed that I would, I don't know, I really, I, I, I really didn't think that I was cast as Usagi. I just assumed that I was cast as like Ami or something, like someone like that. Because um, I'm not really um, used to playing the lead, I guess. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, I've played leads before, but like, not that kind of lead, you know, like, like, usually I'm like the super shy girl or like the super, you know, tomboy, like it just not, I don't know, just I, I it just didn't occur to me at all. So I was pretty surprised. Um, so, yeah, so actually the funny story, when they were casting for Naruto, same exact thing happened. I was in Hawaii. <laughs> and they asked to come in for a callback, and I said, I can't, I'm in Hawaii. And I thought, oh, shoot, I blew that. And then I ended up getting cast as Naruto, as Hinata anyway. So um, maybe that's the lesson. I should just go to Hawaii and not be available for a callback. <laughs> there you go, everyone. If you want to get that part that you're egging for, go to Hawaii and wait for a yeah. phone call. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Hawaii makes every it makes dreams happen for anime voice actors. Yeah, and you're in Hawaii, so <laughs> there you go. Bad. Even if you don't get the part, you're still in Hawaii. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I think that's the thing is that uh, it's one thing to get a lead role in an anime, but it it's a completely different thing when not only do you get the lead role in an anime, you get the lead role of a character who is basically synonymous with anime in general like most people if you ask anyone what anime is if you ask like my parents they go like oh Japanimation uh, they yeah. know things like Astro Boy or Sailor Moon so right. it, it must be it's it's got to be like a big deal at least for a lot of people to be like oh you're voicing Sailor Moon she's like one of the, the biggest things in, in Japan and America that must you know you, you certainly must have uh, a newfound legion of fans for that um, I will say that the nicest thing about it is that 
Um, I, I mean, I've, I've been working as an actress in an anime for a really long time. And, like, I'm not... I love what I do. Um, I love the fans. I love my job, and I actually and I actually really like anime. I love the genre. Um, that's how I. That's how, I mean. Before I was working in the industry, I was a fan. You know, um, so I I appreciate and love all those things, but I've never won so much to be like, oh, such a, I'm such a big deal or anything because I've never really felt that way because for most part, really. Like, the anime fandom, they're wonderful and they're really, like, passionate. But, like, for the average person, they don't really know or care. And so, like, usually if I go to a party or whatever, like, I'm not, like, I don't really, like, I, if someone, if it comes up, what do I do? I'll, I'll say it. But, but usually what happens is you tell someone, oh, I'm an actress or I'm a voice actress. And the immediate next thing that they ask is, well, what have you been in, you know? And I've been in a ton of stuff that the average person has never heard of. <laughs> so, ask your kids, they know what Naruto is. So, like, you know, and, and Naruto is, I would think Naruto and Bleach are a really big deal, but there are a lot of, even a lot of kids too, they just don't watch it, you know? Even though it's on Cartoon Network, like, there are tons of people who, Never even heard of it, you know. Um, and I, but and and it, and it's Naruto. I think it's a huge deal, you know. Um, so now, at least if I say Sailor Moon, people, even if they've never seen it and have no intention of watching it, they've yeah. at least heard of it. So they at least know the name. Like it's got that yeah, sort of uh, household name attached to it. Yeah. So you feel a little bit legitimate. Le- there's like you're like legitimized is that a word um you you don't feel like you're this crazy person trying to make up that like that's what you do for a living <laughs> you know like oh yeah i've always like, said in a, in a fan dub that's not the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, no i'm like yeah like when i say i'm a voice actress like what have you done you yeah. know and i and like i've done this nope i've done this nope and then this, nope, nope. <laughs> like, they're like, okay, well, you know. Well, because they're um, like anime, sort of like a cultish thing. It's not surprising yeah, that yeah, they exactly. haven't seen most of these things or even heard of so them. I don't even, like, you know, and I don't know. So I usually don't even, like, say anything. And, but nowadays it's 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 nice because, like, um, I'm at a point where I've actually done some original animation as well. So, so I can at least, you know, I, I can at least... Mention those projects if if um if they have never heard of anime, but um, but also I, I don't know I don't I try not to get too much of a swelled head because like truth of the matter is I'm not the first person voicing this part you know. Um, now, aren't you uh you're you're the fourth right? Um, y- yes. Wait, hold on. <laughs> yes, because there was the original girl who I always forget her name. And then there was Terry Hawks, and then there was Linda Valentina, and then myself, yeah. I believe, because uh, if I'm not mistaken, the original dub was uh, done in Canada. Um, y- yes. I think, yeah, I think they were, well, I feel like one of them was done in L.A., and then the other one was done in Canada. I know they went through three Sailor, three previous actresses to play Sailor Moon, but it, I think the property itself went to two different companies, too. This I did not know, actually. <laughs> one of the companies was Canadian. Canada seems so, like, to be a very common place to dub anime nowadays. Um, yeah. Um, they have a lot of good talent there. so They and, really do. <laughs> and I think, I think, I'm not, I might be wrong about this, but I think the government has, there's some, like, um, their government benefits, I guess, that incentives that they offer production companies, maybe, that makes it easier, because it's, anime is pretty, done pretty cheaply, so. Well, yeah. I well, I, I did hear that, something like, that it's cheaper to uh, produce uh, dubs and or original content in Canada than, at least for the voice actor side, I, I heard somewhere that it's cheaper to do it there than it is here. Because, uh, like, that, that new My Little Pony show is done in Canada, but it's it's a Western-produced show. Because, uh, yeah, I think there's something like, it's cheaper to uh, do it do it in, in Canada than it is to do it here. Well, I think even filming 
live action stuff is also can be cheaper because if you get a because the government has a pretty good incentive program. That's right. So, yeah, because I think the the new Godzilla movie was most of it was shot in Canada, Toronto I think, I like, mostly. Everything on the Sci Fi Channel is uh, Canada, I think too. Well, like, how about that? Shows. It's yeah. like Shark to Push is probably shot Battle in Star Canada. <laughs> yeah, Battlestar Galactica was all in Canada, you know. Oh, really? So, hmm? I did not. Well, I mean, to me, it was all in space, but <laughs> now I know it was actually Canada's <laughs> Canadian actually space. space. Yeah. <laughs> Canadian space, eh? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, which because you brought up earlier that you were uh, a fan of anime when uh, when you started getting getting some work in. Uh, both the dubbing and, and the uh, ADR direction thing. Is it safe to say you were a fan of the Sailor Moon property before you eventually got the role of Sailor Moon? No. And really? I, uh, I never watched an episode before. Sailor That's Moon. amazing. Maybe saw like clips or something. But, well, because by the time Sailor Moon, I- I'm older than you are. By the time <laughs> Sailor Moon was on television or when I, I'd heard of it, obviously. But, um, I was in college already. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't the type of stuff I was watching and it was kind of old. So it was, I think, I think I, it might've started when I was in high school and then when I was in college, it really blew up. Um, but it, it was, it was a little bit, it's the odd, it skewed a little bit young for my tastes at the time. Like when I was in college, I was, I was watching Evangelion and Escaflone, um, so it's not, it was watching more shonen shows, I guess. Um, so it wasn't that, I wasn't that keen on magical girl shows. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I also, uh, there were only two magical girl shows I ever watched in my life. The other one was Card Captor Sakura. Well, I mean, it was called Card Captors when I, when I was a kid, but yeah, sure, sure as hell, everyone would insist that I called Card Captor Sakura. Card Captor was um, a little bit, it, it's a newer show. Like Sailor Moon was actually an older show. Yeah. Like, like the animation was so much older. But by the time it came to the states, I feel like it was even, you know, it was it co- took a while I think to come to the states. And like Car Captor Sakura, there was different iterations of it, and there was like a newer series, and the, an- the animations were like pretty. Um, plus, I'm not. I was. I was more. I was more into shows that had. Like a, like had cliffhangers, you know. Mm. So I, you know, I watched, you know, and like Fushigi Yugi, I watched too. I wasn't into so much shows that were more like Monster of the Week for. And I know that Sailor Moon, there is a, there is like a through line of the mystery between, you know, her and Mamoru, but, but like there are a lot of episodes in the beginning, which is kind of like Monster of the Week, so. I'm actually really glad I never saw it because I feel like had I been an expert at it and seen it, I I don't know that I'd be able to do what I'm doing with it now, you know? Well, I guess there is an upside to that. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of nice to be able to discover the episodes with, like, fresh eyes now as I'm doing it. Well, I can certainly, like, because I hadn't seen it since I was six, it's, it's uh, new seeing it all over again on... Uh, Blu-ray, so it's kind of like, at least for me, seeing it with fresh eyes, because I hadn't seen it in so many years, and again, a dub I wasn't aware was new, so that's how out of touch I was with my memories of the show. (laughs) Anyone could have fooled me. But yes, uh, for everyone else listening, the Sailor Moon sets 1 and 2 are available right now, uh, any store. In fact, I've seen them at Walmart, so pick them up if you haven't, if you're a big fan of the show. Uh, I think a lot of you will like the new dub. Stephanie Shea is a very good Sailor Moon, in my personal opinion. Uh, And for you in general, there's a lot of people out there I know for a fact uh, are listening in who are aspiring voice actors that want to get into this industry, anime or otherwise. What do you think would be the best advice you can give for anyone that wants to uh, pursue that goal in their life? Well, number one, I wouldn't... um, I would not have the aspiration to just be an anime voice actor. Um, because it's just not, you, you'll probably end up starving to death. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't pay very much as I've been told. No, no, it doesn't pay very much at all. Um, and you need to live in a town where they actually have a good VO community and produce a lot of projects that you would be able to be cast for. Um, I would say that 
acting is key. There are so many voice actors um, who have wonderful sound or can do a cute voice, um, but they don't have the acting chops to go um, with it. And your voice, the quality of your voice can only go so far. So um, I would make sure that you have a strong acting background. So whether that means, I mean, you don't have to go to college for it, but you know, you take classes, read books, um, practice, you don't have to have an audience practice, you know, um, certain things that are helpful as any sort of musicality, singing lessons, accents, languages, all of those things could um, get your foot in the door. Because if you're just like an average pleasant sounding actor who wants to do yo, there are tons, even if you're a great actor, there are tons of other great voiced actors doing Bigo, so it's harder to get noticed. But if you, you can do an accent really well that most other people can't, that's a way to get your foot in the door. Or if you speak a language that other people can't, you know, that's a way to get noticed and get your foot in the door. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I, those are um, my tips. My other tip would be to always be professional and nice. You don't know who you're talking to. You don't know how much weight they hold. Um, and you don't know where they're going to be working next or who they're going to be working with next. And everybody who works in this industry talks to each other about the actors that they've worked with because we all refer each other and we want to refer good people and, you know, we want to make the jobs easier for the directors and the producers. So we want good people to be working. So everyone talks, you know, to each other. So always be polite and always be professional. It's okay if you're a fan. I started out as a fan, but I would keep it in check a little bit. I don't mean like totally hide it, but like there have been times when, you know, I'll run into aspiring voice actors um, who are maybe too exuberant in their excitement to, um, for, the, for the anime project. And it can be a little off-putting to people and you just don't want to do anything that would, it's so hard to succeed that you don't want to do anything to, you know, make someone have a negative opinion of you right off the bat, you know. And sometimes when I see fans who are like so crazy excited about an opportunity to do VO, they're not even listening to direction because they're just so overwhelmed in their excitement, you know, like it's impeding their ability to give a good performance or to be professional. And that's when it's kind of dangerous. So I would just say like, if you are, if you are like a super fan and you're getting opportunities to do voiceover, just remember to always be professional and remember to be a little bit cautious about having, you know, your excitement, you know, um, kind of, I don't know how to say it, like, don't let it um, make you unprofessional, you know? I think that's uh, some very solid and sound advice that everyone listening should consider, considering the fact that a lot of people listening to me are aspiring voice actors. So learn to act and be professional. I think those are very key things in the industry. And I'd like to thank Stephanie Shea for stopping by. It was wonderful getting to talk with the current voice of Sailor Moon, one of the biggest anime icons out there. It was wonderful getting to know you and help promote the new release and maybe some future releases of Sailor Moon on Blu-ray and DVD with your voice. Yay! Thanks so much, guys. This is the sign of Thurman saying goodnight. If you enjoyed it, then please like and share. This was a podcast which he likes to call it.